Sound design. Yeah. What is the relationship between time and phase, and do they ever have a one-to-one -one relationship so that when you move one millisecond of delay, you also have one degree of phase shift? So I think part of the confusion of time versus phase is because they're just two different graphs. So time we are dividing by 10, and with the phase graph we're dividing by 360. Um, and these are just like two worlds that we constantly have to move between. So for a while I've been wanting to take a look at where I could see a one-to-one -one relationship. So I've got the phase invader simulator open here and I have made some changes to it so we can investigate that. But first let's talk about what numbers we're going to actually look at. So let's start by dividing a thousand by 360. That gives us 2.77. So that tells me that at 2.77, or let's say 2.78 hertz, one millisecond, so 1,000 milliseconds is a second, one millisecond should be one degree of phase shift. Okay, let's verify that in the phase invader simulator over here. So although this says three here, it's actually 2.778. So I'll start just by putting in 360 milliseconds and nothing happens because it does one complete resolution. Let's go back to 180 and there we go. So the phase is 180, milliseconds 180. And if I put the cursor in the right place, then we can see, yes, we have 180 degrees of phase shift at 180 milliseconds. And I can play around with this here and look at one, two, and as I'm changing this, you can look at this dot move a tiny bit, but you can look up here at the cursor readout, which has these numbers, three, four, five, 10, 100. So if I want to get to 120 degrees of phase shift, then I know I can just type in 120 because we have a one-to-one -one relationship at two point seven seven eight hertz so this might be a helpful uh, mnemonic device for me or a milestone i can remember that there's always a one-to-one -one relationship here so let's look at another number let's divide ten thousand by 360 and that gives me 27.78 so i'll say at 27.78 hertz one millisecond should be what? Well, I added a zero here, so this is no longer a second. This is um, 10,000 milliseconds, so I need to multiply this by 10 as well. So I'm expecting one millisecond to equal 10 degrees of phase shift at 27.78 hertz. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are at 27.78. And if I put in one millisecond of delay, I expect to see 10 degrees of phase shift. There we go, there's 10 degrees up there. Here this little dot has moved 10 degrees. Let's go to two, let's go to three. So now if I wanna to get to 120 degrees, it's not 120, it's 120 divided by 10. So I should put in 12 and that gets me to 120 degrees. And if I wanna to get to 180, I could put in 18. There we go. Okay, let's do one more. Let's look at 100,000 divided by 360. So at 277.78 hertz, I expect one millisecond to be not one, not 10, but 100 degrees multiplying by 10 again. Let's take a look now at 277.78 hertz. Okay, so I expect one millisecond of delay to be 100 degrees, so one. Okay, there we go. There's 100 up there in the cursor. Here's 100 down here. So this time if I wanna to get to 120, I don't divide by 10, but I divide by 100. So 1.2 should be 120, and here we see it. And if I want to get to 180, it would be 1.8, okay? And now it could be interesting to look at all three of these together. 
Okay, so they're all at zero. I've got 2.7 hertz, uh, 27 and 277. So if I put in one millisecond of delay, what am I expecting? Well, we, we know that 2.7 hertz has a, the one-to-one -one relationship. So this should be one, 10, and 100 degrees of phase shift. There we go. One, 10, 100. And if we want to hit 120 degrees, we'll start with our third dot at 1.2. If we want to hit 120 degrees with our second dot, that would be 12. And if we want to hit it with the uh, very first dot at 2.7 hertz, we go to 120. It's cool that these are all lined up. We're just not seeing all of the wraparounds in between them. So that could be interesting to look at. What if we look at all the intermediary points between these dots? So here's all the points in between them. Let's zoom in. Let's look at one millisecond of delay. So there's the pattern that we had before. One, 10, and 100 degrees of phase shift. Uh, let's get to 120, so 1.2. Let's get to 360. So let's make this point go all the way around. So that should be 3.6. There we go. So one complete revolution here experienced. So now 277 hertz has had one cycle, and now we can see all of the points in between. So our first point should be at 3.6, right? And then 36, and then 360. And now let's look at that number 120 that we had before. And it looked like our points here, here, and way up here were all the same, but that's because we didn't see all the wraparounds in between. Let's do something first. Let's go back to 1.2. So here we've got 120. Let's um, multiply by 10, go up to 12. And now we can see that there are one, two, three wraparounds in between. So that's 120. Um, let's go back to 3.6. Uh, so one wraparound, let's go up to 36. So then what we expect to see 10 wraparounds, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? Because it's uh, 360 divided by 10. So now if we go to 360, we expect to see 100 wraparounds. And then the graph sort of falls apart because I don't have enough points for us to actually count them. And who would want to do that anyway? Cool. So I hope looking at these milestones has helped you a little bit. I guess the takeaway here is that at 2.78 hertz, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between milliseconds and degrees of phase shift. So it might be helpful to just remember this milestone and then you can just take it up by uh, multiples of 10 anytime you want to think about anything else. So if I'm around 277.78 hertz, I know that one millisecond of change in time will be equal to 100 degrees of phase shift. So I hope this was helpful for you and uh, let me know what questions this brings up for you. Sound design. Yeah.